All right, so I wanna do this in order of what I think is the most important to least important. It's just my personal opinion, you know? What I think is gonna blow your engine versus cause minor issues. So we're gonna start with the oil. First thing you gotta do is find this solenoid plug right here. Basically what this solenoid does inside your engine is switches your engine to a low oil, low oil pressure when you're say idling or under low um, load, like on the highway. Basically just unplug it and cover it just in case you want to use it again for whatever reason. And then I just plug that with some paper towel. It had electrical tape on it, but it fell off. Um, I did this on my C400 and on this car. Never had an issue. Oil temps warm up probably five to 10 minutes faster. So definitely a mod I would do. Second one you're gonna wanna check is these. Basically these are, well not basically, these are the cams phasers. Cam position sensors. Basically just a magnet. Read the, um, where the cam is. Tells the ECU just timing and stuff. Um, what, what happens is they leak somehow if you ever take one out you'll see that there's no way they're leaking but they do because they're completely sealed all the way around they leak into these plugs which are you trace them go all the way to this guy the ECU so what happens is ECU gets filled with oil stops working four thousand dollars so what you do is you can buy these adapters on eBay. But they are just little, little cheap pigtails extra that you connect in between your harness and your sensor, which is probably leaking. Well, every, every 278 I've seen has had those leaking. And it'll cost a lot of money to fix, so just buy these pigtails. What I did also was I took a little syringe with some RTV in it and I went inside the sensor and I filled it with RTV just a little bit and then I plugged this in. So what that does is completely seals it so it stays in the sensor. Then uh, you have your sacrificial pigtails. You can also buy them for your normal cam plugs but I haven't seen any of these leak. So that's what I did. Basically, um, just do it. They're like 30 bucks. Buy them on eBay, you know. All the connectors are cheap shit, but if it breaks, 30 bucks, who cares, you know. And this is probably a few thousand dollars if it goes bad. So just pony up the money. Um, while we're here, this timing cover on both sides. I, I just did this one, that's why this engine is all apart. And I'll fan out. Um, this timing cover loves to leak. When it leaks, you'll see, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, here you go. You got the alternator right here. So what happens is it leaks oil into the alternator. Alternator will get ruined slowly by the oil. Then you got a $400 alternator you gotta put in. So just take the time, you know, you got these two tubes, charge pipes. The um, the lower the lower hose clamp on this side is a pain in the ass. So what I did was I just put a bunch of extensions together. I used let's see if I have one handy. I used this wobble extension, wrap some tape around it so you can angle it and it'll stay in place. And then I used a magnet like this, put it down in there and use the magnet to guide the thing on. So that was pretty easy. Um, well, it wasn't easy, it was hard. Then you just pop this one off. Then you can get all these. And according to Mercedes, these are one-time use. These, I don't know if those are, but probably. Um, you really should reuse them. I mean, you really should buy new ones. Don't reuse them, but I did because I don't care. So, you know. Don't follow my example. I did it on this side also. I actually broke one. I don't know if you can see it. I think it was down on the bottom. 
but I replaced it with a random bolt I had laying around and it worked out. So yeah, that was pretty easy. Okay, next we're gonna do coolant. What you have are these little shits. One, two, three. Basically what they do is send coolant to your turbo. You can see they go all the way to the turbo over there. And on this side, they are the probably the hardest bolt you could possibly get. See, there's a bolt between those two um, silver things. There's a bolt right between them. You can't see the head of it. Um, basically, you have to, if you did it the way I did it, you have to thread a little tiny ratchet, even thinner than this. Like this one isn't thin enough and you gotta get it all the way down in there. I'm just trying to get that out. But what I saw on the forum is someone took this right here and cut it, cut these, popped it off, and then cut it off the new one, the new plastic, because this is what breaks over here. These don't really break. And then run your rubber hose, run a rubber hose between those two. And there you go. You're never gonna have to replace this again, probably, unless that breaks. But at least if it breaks, just pop the hose off, replace that, and you're good. You'll have a lot more room with the belt off, um, the charge pipes on this side off. As for this side, um, you can do the same here. It'd be a little harder with the fan. I don't know if this one breaks. I'm sure it does, but you can just try and find a bent hose already or something. And if you're wondering if it's bad to do that, this already has a rubber hose on it. So the rubber is definitely okay to use on these. Obviously, if there's rubber here, this is intercooler. This is different. Uh, this thing, little shit, likes to break. Let's see if I can get a part number. Yeah, whatever. Just you figure it out. I'll see if I can pop it out. I don't want to break it, but that does break a lot. Uh, it goes bad. Easy replacement. There's a heater hose connector back here. Right there, you can see it. That will sometimes crack. Um, obviously, it's a pain in the ass. If you look where it is, so you're never gonna get to it. So it'll be a big job. But I wouldn't worry about that. Right, um, back to coolant. There's one more thing you can do. It's called the uh, always on intercooler mod. Basically, you run a wire. You can see mine. Uh... Actually, you can't see mine. But you can run a wire in there to the relay. There's a relay in here. And basically you run the wire to the ground and it shorts the relay. Well, it doesn't short it, it turns it on. Um, and what it does is it turns on your intercooler pump, which is right here. Turns it on permanently as soon as the engine starts and puts it at full power. So what that does is gives you your intercooler coolant um, gives it a better chance to cool the car down. Uh, if you have a 12 or 11 M278, I believe they don't have that secondary cooling system, so don't bother with that. Um, it's a good mod if you can figure it out, but definitely not necessary. All right, sit back over here. There is a vacuum nipple right here. This one isn't that important, but what it does is in first gear, this is a little um, diaphragm and it closes in first gear, gives you full boost. Without it, it snaps. You don't get full boost in first gear. Um, it's lower zero to 60s. You can find them on 
eBay for about $10. They were part for the Ford EcoBoost, the one in the VS, I think, the little shitty engine junk. Um, yeah, you can also get a Volvo version of it that comes with the full pump, and it's about 100 bucks, I believe. Probably better quality, but, you know, whatever. They're literally 10 bucks, and they're super easy to get, too. There's no reason not to. This thingy is your boost controller, basically. It shows your boost. This likes to crack, cause boost leak. You can buy new ones on uh, FCP Euro, I think. Like, $2, $3. Might as well replace both of them. I have an extra. Um, that's about it. You just want to oil changes every 3,000 to 5,000. Don't go above that. Or you will destroy this engine. These engines are very sensitive. Um, see your turbos in there. Nice carrots. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, let me give a tip for the fan. So for the fan, basically all you need is this one right here, which clips in here. The rest of these, what I did was I snapped them off, right? Because if you don't snap them off, you get to remove every single coolant line around here, lose all your coolant. So just snap them off. What I did was I drilled a little hole right here for this part of the fan. Um, there, ran a zip tie through it. Because, you know, down there, the fan clips in there and on those two and has the charge pipes here. So even if it fell off, it's not gonna hit the belt. It's not gonna destroy anything, you know. It's gonna just make a bit of noise probably hitting the charge pipe, but yeah, it's a lot easier because you're gonna be popping this fan off probably pretty often if you don't do everything all at once. Especially if you gotta get to the thermostat or this guy right here, your oil filter housing, because it leaks. Down here, your oil cooler leaks. Mine is leaking, even though I changed the gasket, so I'm assuming it's bent. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, honestly, I haven't had any issues with this engine at all. Um, somebody replaced this radiator, as you can see, it's 22, and this coolant line popped off while I was driving to a meet, so that sucked. I looked stupid. Um, this one actually split in half while I was sitting at home. So that's interesting. Basically the only issues I've had with, the, with this engine has been coolant stuff, hoses. So honestly, if you have the money, buy this whole line here. I would buy this lower hose, maybe, I don't know. This one. Uh, these aren't as important. These are intercooler. They don't do much. That's for my catch cans. Um, yeah. So if you have a 2014 or below, you potentially have issues in here with your check valves and tensioners. If you ever cold start your car or even warm start, which is what happens to mine, um, and if you hear like a rattle, like a ch -ch 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 -ch, your tensioner is bad or your check valve, you don't have one. Um, basically, those tension your cam phasers, it could also be your cam phasers and they're bad, but that's less likely. Um, they tension your cam phasers and sometimes they lose oil pressure. So when you start and you don't have oil pressure, the rattle, the chain rattles a bit, you know, slaps around. Uh, basically, you gotta buy the check valves if you have a 13 or below, I believe. If you have a 14 or below, you may need a tensioner. Um, I'll try and link the uh, TSB or from the NHTSA, I think, um, about what you need to do, which engines this affects. So yeah, I'll try and link, if I remember, I'll link the um, NHTSA documents for these recalls. Uh, they're honestly not that bad. Once you get these plates off, the tensioners are right there. I don't know about the check valve. I think you just got to have a tool. Smack it in real quick. If you need phasers, that's a bit bigger. 
you probably have to pull the valve cover, although I have seen people do it without it. Um, there's a video on YouTube of a guy that does it to an M276 without pulling the valve cover. So that might make it a bit easier if you can figure that out. And if you want to know how to do these, I have a video for my, I did for my C400, which surprisingly has an identical plate. Same sensor, same plate, you know, exactly the same. Absolutely nothing changed between the two sides, except how to get to it. You know, you decide you got to pull these two charge pipes, which are a pain in the ass. This one's a bit easier, so you can kind of, you can kind of see your little things, um, hose clamps, get those off easier. But yeah, I do have the torque specs and everything on that video, so if you want to see it, go check out. Oh god, that sounds stupid. Uh, go look at that video and check the description there. Uh, it does apply. So, yeah. Alright, so we're gonna give a quick repap. Fix this seal, because your alternator will like it. Fix this side, because then you won't look stupid leaking oil everywhere. Um, Fix your coolant lines, because then you won't look stupid spilling coolant everywhere out of meat or something. Um, check all your hoses. Replace any that are cheap, cracked, hard, obviously. Um, probably just buy this and replace it. You got your vacuum transducer, vacuum diaphragm back there. You got your heater hose connection back there. Um, most important, I think, unplug this solenoid there should be more info in the description or on the forums um, there's another video on YouTube that goes into it better and there's another video that says don't do it but that video says don't do it because you'll have to change your oil sooner but if you follow my directions and change them every three to five you'll be fine